Hi, I'm Dylan with Viral Deathman, and I'm going to show you the basic maintenance tasks for a air cold benchmark boiler. Um, a few basic things a building owner can do in order to help hopefully uh, prolong the life of the boiler and avoid cost of service costs. Uh, the four things we're going to go through are the air filter, cleaning that, cleaning the flame sensor, and then also cleaning the igniter, and then as well as cleaning the condensate trap and drain. To get into the air filter is just held on with a clamp, typical hose clamp. Loosen that and it falls right off. These filters are made by KNN, so they are cleanable with the KNN air filter kit. They should last a long time. I believe they're recommended replaced every couple of years, but as long as you take care of them, they will last a long time. The basic process when cleaning the KNN air filters as if you have their kit, which they sell at any, any auto supply store, they have a cleaner and they also have a lubricant. You want to take the cleaner and spray down the entire filter, saturate it completely with the cleaner. Um, doesn't hurt to let it sit for a little while, but then from there you can take it to a slop sink or a mop sink and completely rinse it with hot water, get it completely clean. Then you want to make sure that before you go to re-oil it with the oil, you have to let it dry completely. So you got to make sure you put it in front of a fan, either overnight or somewhere it's going to completely dry before you oil it. Once it's completely clean, you just take the oil and spray a nice even coat until the entire filter is a nice light pink. So this is the filter after it's been washed. We use the cleaner and then we hose it off and let it dry for a while. Um, this is the Canon air filter oil. You want to just take and get a nice even coating over the whole filter. And I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but it should leave a nice light red, almost pink color. You want to try to get it straight into all the crevices so you get as much surface area of the filter as you can covered with the soil. This will help trap the smaller, smaller contaminants that we don't want in the boiler. So you get a good, generous coating on it. So I'm not sure if the camera picks it up, but it's got a nice, nice pink tint to it now. When it was dirty, it was almost black. That was just all the dirt and stuff that soaked in. So from there, we'll just go put it back on with our 5 sixteenths, and that is it. The next step is going to be cleaning the flame sensor and the igniter. So there's two separate components up here. Our flame sensor is on this side on the Benchmark 3000. The wire just pulls off like a typical spark plug and it holds, there's two Phillips head screws that hold it down and they are offset. So when you go to put it back together, you can't reverse it. It only fits one way. When you pull these apart and inspect them, you want to look at the porcelain and the gasket and everything else. If anything looks to be in not good shape, you want to replace it. The gasket will stick down. You just gently, gently work it free if it's been in for a while. So you pull it out and you see all the, the white material on there. That's all the buildup from corrosion from being in the flame. I generally just use a piece of 3M Brillo pad to polish it. You want to clean the stuff off the surface. You do not want to take the top layer of the metal off. You just want to polish it. So whether you're using a 3M Brillo pad or something else, you don't want to use anything that's too abrasive. You just want to get it nice and clean and that's what you're worried about. Once it's clean and you just see metal, you also want to look and observe the, uh, the porcelain, make sure nothing's cracked. Um, and this one will need a new gasket, so we'll get a new gasket put on when we put it back together. But just to put it back together, it's the same reverse operation. Just put it in, and like I said, you cannot turn it around. The holes will not line up, so it only goes in one way. So 
So once you're done with the flame sensor, cleaning that and putting it all back together. The other component we're gonna clean is the igniter. The fan jet igniter is what Eric calls it. Oh, it's got a solenoid on top of it here and an ignition wire here. The ignition wire just pulls off, again, just like a spark plug. Then to take off the flame, or I'm sorry, the pilot solenoid, you would just loosen this with a 7 16 nut, this ferrule nut here. It's a little compression fitting is all it is for the, for the pilot gas line. Once that's loose, you can set your pilot solenoid aside and then take your one inch wrench. It's just a one inch nut on the bottom of it. Break it free. Usually once it's free, it'll spin by hand. Not necessarily always, but once it's free, you can take it out. And the same thing, you take your Brillo pad and clean up the ends and make sure everything's nice and clean and straight like it should be. There are also clocking washers sometimes. It goes into the manual to explain if you need these or not. You want the pilot solenoid or the pilot line situated a certain direction. You have to address the manual because it's a little bit different for each model. But if you need the clocking washers, each washer will change the orientation of the pilot line by about 90 degrees. Once you have it apart, you can look in here and see where we spark. There's not, not a lot of buildup on there, just a little bit. So again, we'll just clean it nicely with a Brillo pad and get some of the junk off. The one, one of the things you want to inspect is this tab on the bottom here. You want to make sure it's not loose or coming off. Um, after a lot of cycles, that can the little rivet can get loose and that tab can break off. At that point, you would need to replace your igniter. You also want to uh, check out all your ceramic, make sure there's no cracks. There's some discoloration, but it all seems to be intact. Just keep it clean and put her back together and she should last another year. You go to put it back in, you should be able to put it in by hand most of the way. Don't turn it by your pilot line, it's a good way to break it. Just turn it by the nut, if you can't then you just gotta use the wrench. A little snug and I'll consult the manual and see where they want that clocked. Other than that, you would just Put your pilot line back on and your wire back on and she should be good to go. There you go. The last maintenance test, you want to make sure you have four regularly is to clean your condensate trap and your drain. Uh, if condensate starts back up the boiler, it will cause alarms and airflow issues and nuisance, nuisance issues. The first thing is you got your trap. It's a basic ball type trap. As the water rises, the ball rises and allows the water to flow out. Uh, there is a clear top so you can see down in it. However, you want to at least once a year take this apart, spray it down with either simple green or a, a good cleaner that's not corrosive or anything too nasty, but usually simple green works good. Open it up and inside is the, the ball that I was talking about, if you can reach it. Just a little plastic ball. Almost looks like a big pot, a ping pong ball. So again, you'll, you want to do the same thing, spray it down with simple green or whatever else and get it cleaned up. And then you want to make sure the inside of the trap is clean also. Spray it down, get in there with some paper towel, get any stuff out of it that might be sitting in the bottom that could cause that ball to stick. Any of that kind of stuff you want you want to get it all out of there and get it get it good and clean clean off the top here you do have a rubber o-ring here that in a maintenance kit it comes with a new o-ring if, if you damage it you can replace it but once everything is good and clean including the ball you know get that all the stickiness or nastiness off of there just drop it back in there's nothing else in there just the ball and then the lid with the gasket so you want to reassemble all that 
These are just thumb screws or you can take them out with Allen keys if they're tight. There's an Allen key hole in the top. Once that's all cleaned up, you also want to make sure that if your boiler has a neutralizer, which most of them here in Michigan do, they should have, you have a neutralizer here that is filled up with the limestone to neutralize the condensate before it goes down a trap. Most of them have a top that you can open to get in and inspect, inspect the limestone. I usually recommend, a, if, if there's unions or an easy way to take it out, I usually like to take it right to a slop sink and dump it out. Clean it as good as I can, again with Simple Green, as well as the rocks, clean those up or replace them. You could buy a replacement kit for them and replace the rocks yearly or clean them and add to them, uh, whatever your manufacturer recommends. Once that's all cleaned and put back together, that is the main, main uh, goal of cleaning the traps and the drains. That way you, got, you have good water flow. You wanna make sure you're constantly all the way back to wherever it drains is clean, make sure there's no rises in the trap, make sure it's been installed properly, which the site has. Again, thank you for watching our video. And just as a reminder, clean the filter, clean the flame sensor, the igniter, and your condensate trap will keep you from having downtime and costly service calls. So hopefully you were able to learn a little something from the video, and please feel free to reach out to us if you need anything else. Thank you very much.